All right, we are back, going into our final hour of Dungeon World Old Town. Woo! Um, oh. so Axiom, I figured out what's gonna happen. That's gonna make you stumble, hesitate, or flinch. <laughs> You're muted. I'm eagerly awaiting to hear this. <laughs> so, um, as you are charging towards this um this object um, I i'm just imagining you say i literally stumble <laughs> <laughs> no that's boring you kill yourself on your halberd so um you are charging with your halberd towards this object and you've made it probably about a quarter of the way there cuz it's still if the clearing is 300 feet long, it's basically 150 feet away from you from where you started. So mm -hmm. you've made it, I don't know, um, 50 feet or so, give or take. And um, on the other side of the clearing, you see the brush part. And um, a uh, dark cloaked shape steps out into the clearing. And, um, you see it also moving towards the sword. You, um, know that you can get to the sword before it, but you don't think that you can destroy the sword before this other figure will reach it. Okay. Do you continue towards the sword? Yes. Okay. Okay. The um, other figure is also rushing towards the uh, center of the uh, of the circle, and can, so the options are basically. Can we let... see the figure? Like, yeah, you all can from see where the, Olivia and I are? You can all see the figure, and in the distance, you hear an old voice going, "Stop! Stop!" I don't do mm -hmm. a good old man. Someone do a good old man stop voice. Stop. Yeah, that's great. Perfect. <laughs> is the person's stride like what you might associate with an old man? Or is um, the person he has like... A, there's a staff and a withered hand holding that staff. and But he's very quick. Like, he he will probably reach the uh, reach the um, pedestal slightly after Axiom. Like, they're racing to it. I he think... comes out of the clearing and he's already, like, on par with me. He is moving with um, an uncanny speed. Okay, this is a demon old man. <laughs> Zed, Zed calls out, identify yourself. He does not respond. He is just frantically shouting at Axiom to stop. <laughs> is he evil, Axiom? Is what I'm is shouting he... at Axiom? Well, you have to Can okay, I do so that while running? Let me look at what it specifically says. When you pray for guidance, even for a moment. So, yes, if you take a moment to pray for guidance, you can see that, yes, this old man is evil. Okay. I, do you shout back that he's evil? Yeah, do you shout back? Uh, yeah, I would shout back. I, I need a little fire support here or something along those lines. I, right, I pat uh, Olivia Open on the fire. back and I tell her to show us what she got. All right, I'd like to... <laughs> Shoot him with a bow. <laughs> okay. As, as soon as he says, I need fire support, there's a fireball heading for that old man. <laughs> like, right in front of Basically where the old man exactly what's happening. Okay. Um, so, let's see. Who's going first, then? I want you to decide amongst yourselves. Is the fireball happening first, or is the, uh, is the uh, arrow happening first? The fireball is the arrow. My bow shoots like, oh, like, like energy ball. I thought ball Zed was also firing a fireball. Magic. That's why I got confused. Oh, he might, he might do that if he would like to do that. But yeah, okay. her question is, which one of our projectiles launches first? Oh, um. Well, you're you're closer, right? So if you guys are going at the same time, which would, well, would plausibly get there faster. Yeah, but I would also say, <laughs> yeah, both are in the arrow at the before. same time. Like, wouldn't Olivia be able to yeah, ready a yeah. bow and arrow? Mine, before? mine was, I was probably, probably like, faster than a spell, yeah. I was stringing an arrow, and like, the, yeah. all I have to do is let it go. Zed is quick at casting spells, but not that fast. <laughs> not as fast as it takes a professional archer to notch and launch an arrow. So, probably Olivia then. 
that makes sense. Okay. So should I, I roll for defying danger by being hidden first? Because um, I was hidden before. Are you trying to use your hiddenness to some advantage? Uh, I'm using it for the shoot him for free ability. Okay. <laughs> then, yeah, go ahead and defy danger with your dexterity. Let's see what it is. The danger being that you will not be hidden and you'll be spotted by him. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, I'm spotted. So mark XP. Um, XP! And um, as you attempt to move into position, you uh, trip over some underbrush. You uh, lose your footing. Um, on this shot, if you still intend to take it, take it at a minus one. Okay. Uh, I am still going to take a shot. Okay. G okay. All right. So, so it's ten. A 10. All right. So, let's see. On a 10, you can deal your damage. Uh, I think that's it, right, for a volley? Um, I think so. You get a clear shot, deal your damage. Okay, so go ahead and roll your nice. damage. Okay. Not that good of damage, but some damage. Um, <laughs> so, you're, um... Arrow <clears throat> sticks into his shoulder, and he doesn't even seem to flinch. In fact, he just snaps off the arrow and keeps running. Well, if we had any doubt that he's, like, not <laughs> just some old man. <laughs> <laughs> um, Zed, were you casting a spell? <laughs> yes, I was launching a level 3 fireball <laughs> spell at him. Aren't you glad you didn't change your spells? <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh roll for intelligence yes bam okay one fireball on demand let me look up fireballs just so i make sure i also have it um the description of it copied onto my character sheet okay that would be easier <laughs> i mean the srd is pretty easily accessible mm -hmm. Uh, it says, you invoke a mighty ball of flame that envelops your target and everyone nearby, inflicting 2d6 damage, which ignores armor. Okay, go ahead and roll your damage. Um, and no one else is nearby, so fortunately um, Axiom will not take that effect. So that's uh, just 2d6, I don't get any bonuses? Yeah, it's just 2d6. Damage. Okay. Okay. Um, so this ball of fire, um, crashes around this old man, burning away not only some of his robes and the arrow smoldering in his shoulder, but also some of his flesh. Um, you see, um, his face is, um, not only charred now, but drawn and pinched and weathered and... His skin looks leathery, but also kind of waxy and pale. Like, like he's not necessarily still alive. Like, he looks like a dead man, but he does not move like a zombie or a skeleton or even that mummy that you've seen before. Mm -hmm. He is something else entirely. But you can tell that your spell has damaged him. All right. Um, is there any way that I could spout lore, or is it still too soon after casting the spell? Um, I want to see if um, Axiom or um, Esteliz have anything that they would like to do, and then after that you can spout lore. <coughs> okay. Axiom continues running for the sword. Okay. <laughs> Estelise, is there anything that you would like to do? Or would you like to... I, don't, I mean, I don't know if there's... I don't really know your moves offhand, so I wasn't sure if there's any of those that are helpful or... Um... I mean, to be fair, you do have plan of action. So if you want to name something that could be here in this situation that you could use mm -hmm. to... 
um, make a plan of action, feel free to do so. I've named what I see in this clearing, but perhaps I've neglected to mention something that you could put to dashing and daring use. <laughs> of course. This neglected to mention the long forgotten pit trap um, full of spikes. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? Um, so, nearby there is a uh, tree that has been uh, bent back and um, and held down by uh, <clears throat> some, what do you call it, like, uh, vines. There we go. Um, I am going to um, hop upon this tree, cutting the vine um, with my rapier, <laughs> which will fling me towards the uh, person. Um, my rapier in front of me, um, just kind of hurling towards him. So you took the phrase, become the arrow, figure it Well, I am... Yes. <laughs> All right. So, true love and high adventure, gain three hold. <laughs> because you are at attempting to enact a daring plan. <laughs> extremely, extremely daring. Um... So you get you can spend one hold, one for one, to add plus one to any parry, defy danger, um, um, either after you finish your plan or and defending the honor, but that's not happening right now. So um, you leap upon this tree, you sever the vines, the tree flings you into the air. Can you please defy danger with your... Um, Either your dexterity or your charisma, your choice. <laughs> <laughs> and she looks great while doing it. I am I will say like, well I'm probably like Hmm. I mean, like I'm I'm not I'm not doing the daring devil. Well, it probably wouldn't apply here, but, like, I'm probably laughing pretty confidently while I'm <laughs> doing all of this, too. You you need a battle cry. You need something that you could say every time you do one of these. Oh, you I do need a battle do. cry. You need to come up with that well, for like next I know, session. Um, another person was very similar. I'll think this. of one before the next session, but for <laughs> now, we'll just say that I'm laughing very confidently. Okay. Um, and then as you fly through the um, center of... This clearing. <coughs> I also need you to defy danger with your wisdom. <laughs> As you're flying through the air. Wait! The sword is good, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... <coughs> go ahead and mark XP. And, um... What happens is... Isn't that your perception's necessarily skewed? Because you're, you're not a particularly aligned character. You're not neither good nor evil. And so, the way that the sword speaks to you is much different different from what it did with Axiom. And um, you just hear a voice in your head, and it says, Hey, smooth moves. Uh, while I'm in the air, I'll probably go, Thanks! <laughs> um, you, nobody knows what's going on, but I, I just probably say thanks while I'm in the middle of charging at this guy. <laughs> Um, you, and you can, you can almost feel this warmth thrumming from the sword. And, um, the voice again says, I like what I see. I think you and I would work really well together. I think I could help you. Well, I'm going to continue on my path. Okay. We'll, we'll resolve that first, and then maybe I'll add <laughs> up on that. Okay, Can you so... really stop in midair anyway? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're yeah, Probably not. <laughs> but, but, like, if I wanted to, you know, you can, like, change your direction a bit or, you know, not charge with the sword <laughs> facing forward to but where I'd be, are, like... Are you heading towards the sword <laughs> or the old man? I don't remember. Oh, I the just... old man. Okay. Yeah, the old man. So, um... <laughs> Since you've got a 10 on that roll, I'm going to say that you land right on him, knocking him off balance. Um, you, of course, land perfectly. Um, 
<clears throat> he uh, tumbles a bit, um, picks himself up off of his feet, and um, he swings his staff at you, not, like, as an attack, but just, like, menacingly, like, um, Docs, help me out here. In an old man voice, can you please say, leave the sword to me, I will take care of it? <laughs> leave the sword to me, I will take care of it. <clears throat> well, that sounded almost like Dr. <laughs> Kane for a minute. That was good. <laughs> Stay um, a while and listen. <clears throat> and well, then well, you well, also uh, hear, uh, Estelise, after the old man says that, you hear in your head, oh, don't do that. That's so boring. You should take me instead. Hmm, the sword doesn't I'll, want to uh, say hi to the old man. That's probably surprising. look at him and say, uh, what, what, are, what are your intentions? Um, are you still standing I, on top of him when you're asking this? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> like standing defiantly on his back while he's laying with my with my rapier, like pointed <clears throat> towards his uh, neck or something mm -hmm. uh, at his face or whatever. Okay. So while this is going on, Axiom, you are still charging towards the sword. Um, Olivia and Zed, what are you two doing? Um, can I get a shot on the dude, or is Estelise like? Um, you'll it? have to defy danger. The danger being that you will hit Estelise. I don't. I don't really want to do that. I don't think. <laughs> oh, if only I had taken the telekinesis spell. Man. <laughs> Could come in handy. Oh, you don't. You don't understand. You mean the spell that I made just for you? <laughs> yes, I was going to take the next level up, which I have the experience for, but we haven't rested, so I can't do that yet. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to wait for a shot to become clear on the guy that okay. won't require me to hit Estelise. That's fair. Right, yeah. And uh, I would like to spout lore on the guy, like if I can identify what type of undead he is. Okay, sure. He appears to be undead, right? Yes, he does. <laughs> Go ahead and roll plus intelligence. Well, that's not a fail. It's um, not a fail. It you was, may it was close. Ask, I think you can <clears throat> let me look at the move real quick. I still don't understand. I will tell you like. something interesting about him, but I will not tell you something useful about him. So let me look up. He looks like your father. Hmm. <laughs> 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 Let me read real quick. You know, if it wasn't for Axiom charging at the sword, now that Estelise is standing on the other guy's back, there is there should be no sense of urgency here. But there is, because Axiom is still barreling for this thing like some sort of monster. She's not <laughs> standing on his back. She landed on him, and then he quickly got up and brushed himself off. And he tried to, but she said she wanted to stand on his back, and she rolled a 10, so she's on his back. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, if with, so pose. with the direction that I'd be charging at him, yeah. So like, I'm I'm on his uh, probably like one one foot on uh, on his stomach or something. You know, like not fully fully standing, mm -hmm. but enough to look awesome with a <laughs> with my sword pointed at his neck. Okay, I know something interesting, but not necessarily useful for you that I can tell you about him. You can tell not only, like, at this distance, it's almost like you don't almost believe it. You think, oh, well, maybe my eyes are playing tricks on me. But you feel like, even <coughs> though his face is pinched and half charred, you almost recognize him. And you can see that his ears are pointed, they're elven, and you feel like... Like you have met this particular man before, though perhaps back when he was still alive. Hmm. Okay. Before that, before I had remembered that we had burned Estrelli, I thought for a moment it may be him. But yeah, he's he's burned. He's gone. So it's not him. No, it is not Estrelli. You do not re you do not recognize this old man. Mm -hmm. Who is very old <laughs> and also dead. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> but Australia was not this old, so you can tell that it's not Australia. <clears throat> Though I do, I have the need to point out that while you <clears throat> did burn him, nobody mentioned that they checked the pyre to make sure that he burned. You just burn, put him on a pyre, and then left. I, I thought we made camp there for that night outside the tower. Yeah, Would it burned low, but no one inspected the pyre. I just feel need to mention that. No, we, we did. We wanted to make sure he didn't become an undead. And he didn't. We, but you didn't, like, <clears throat> bury him or do anything with the bones or whatever. I'm just saying, like, you left the pyre burning there. I mean... And then we camped next to it. Yeah. And then the next morning it was out. Yeah. It was done. We had people on watch. Yeah. Uh, eh, so be it. <laughs> Onward we go then. Okay, I so my action. everybody cast all their shit. I think so. I think so. All um, right, I smashed the sword. Um. Okay, so you raise your halberd and bring it down upon the sword, and um, your arms begin to quake. <laughs> As um, the sword repels your attack. I smash the sword. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're gonna just keep on doing that? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, okay. uh, well, Axiom repeatedly tries to uh, hit the sword. I'm gonna look at the uh, old man and say, "What? What are your intentions here?" Uh, Docs, help me out here and say to get the sword and get off my back. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> to get the sword and get off my back. <laughs> he tries to, <clears throat> like, writhe out from under your grip or your foot. Or I, uh, I point my rapier, <laughs> like, close enough to his neck to where, not that I'm drawing blood, but, you know, like, you're, you're pushing the skin a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I tell him, uh, what do you tend to do once you have the sword? He says, that's none of your business. <laughs> that's none of your business. Uh, con considering the circumstances, I, I'm, I uh, beg to differ. He rasps a laugh. <laughs> and <clears throat> begins to stand up underneath the weight of you. What do you do? Hmm. Um. We'll probably stab him. Okay. Um. He is prone and at your mercy and not able to defend himself. So go ahead and just deal your damage. What? Oh, that's that not can't be right. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> and that's with fail. <laughs> Nice. It's just a one d eight, and I press the one d eight thing. Let me look at your. I, I think sheet. you typed okay. one one d eight. It rolled eleven d eight. Yeah, I think you put a one in there, and you're not supposed to have. Yeah, it in like there. you, you, oh, you so typed just one twice. Yeah, that sword had some crazy okay. holy damage. Oh, to it. So there we go. I'm, there yeah, we go. I was trying to fix it, but you already <laughs> did. <laughs> okay. Um. There we go. That's 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 better. <laughs> it looks a little bit more appropriate. <laughs> Thirty-seven damage. I'm like, okay, wait. This class is broken. We have to read this. Yeah, class. That's, that's what I was thinking. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, you find it harder to stab into his skin than you expect, but you do pierce it. Um. You don't draw blood, though. You draw black ichor from him. Um, he's still standing up, though, and he is still laughing. I, uh, I probably announce, uh, what, what, uh, shit, how do I word this? Um, what strange <laughs> creature does not, uh, bleed nor uh steam affected by damage um just kind of like out loud so people could hear so maybe um, do you do you <laughs> let him stand then or or you do nothing um, else to prevent his standing <clears throat> i mean maybe 
maybe maybe I'd I'd kick at his what do you call it like the back of the shin if that makes sense you know what I mean like okay um try to where the joints like, are how... so for parry you have to be attacked right like how 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 explicitly is attack defined like if somebody's trying to walk past you and you're trying to prevent that. Because oh, parry no, lets I, you lock someone parry. in place, doesn't it? I didn't parry. Yeah, I'm right just saying there. maybe it could work as a way to prevent him from moving past you. <laughs> oh, is it? Could it? I, I don't. I don't know. That was my question. I don't know um, enough about it, it says, because it's custom made. Yeah, it says for the parry thing. It says when you parry an attack with your blade. So I'd I'd imagine that they would <clears> have to be attacking, right? Yeah, yeah. When it specifies with your blade, it kind of yeah. implies that they're like. Swinging yeah. a weapon um, at you, not just so you past kick you. at him, but he's still able to get to his feet, and um, his pinched face gets close to yours, and he grins a smile of yellowed and dark brown teeth, and he says, oh, "I just looked it up, and then I got all excited about my uh." <laughs> he says, um, "The <coughs> army of the fallen." And then he turns and he starts going towards the sword that um, I scream, kill him. <laughs> Axiom is uh, <laughs> trying yeah. to unsuccessfully break with <laughs> his. Yeah, uh, Axiom, power. you have two evil targets in front of you. If you wanted to yeah, switch, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm going to um, defend the sword from him, and I I will be like. I don't know, chasing him as fast as I can? I probably can't run at the same pace, but I am running after him while I'm yelling, kill him. Okay. Or stop well, him. Stop him, kill him both. <laughs> once he, like, passes Estelise and they're not, like, physically entwined anymore, I want to, like, shoot at him again. Okay. Go ahead and roll your volley with your dexterity. All right. There we go. Okay. Um, go ahead and deal your damage. All right. Another arrow thunks into <clears throat> his chest region. Actually, it hits right where his heart should be, but it doesn't seem to really affect him, and he snaps that one off as well. He does look like, like you, um, Estelise, you're able to see that um, the one in his shoulder is not trickling any ichor, but the one that uh, Olivia just shot in his chest does have some ichor trickling down so it looks like that one did damage him somewhat okay um mm -hmm. but he has not slowed his pace towards the sword though axiom is now defending it should i um, roll for defense maybe estelise <laughs> um as you are um approaching this man you hear the voice of the sword in your head saying yes yeah, stop him do it and then pick me up we'll go on adventures it'll be fun I um while while I'm running towards him, I wanna uh reach into my adventuring gear. Okay, what do you wanna pull out? Um, I'm gonna pull out some some heavy duty rope. Okay, you pull out some rope out of your adventuring gear, mark off one use. <laughs> now how exactly does this work? Does this work that now that I have now like I write down that I have rope? Yep. Oops. Four uses. Okay. So now you have rope. Um, Zed, what do you want to do? You've been kind of standing at the edge of this clearing <clears throat> out of um, out of the range of this sword. You cast your fireball. It seemed to affect it somewhat. But now Esteles and Axiom are both within range that the fireball would hit all three and the sword. Oh, I am well aware of the situation and how utterly useless I am at the moment. <laughs> you don't have, like, your magic missiles? No, no, because I figured Fireball would be more more powerful and more devastating than having two attack spells. And no <coughs> utility spells would be bad. But the one utility spell I have isn't really going to help us out much. So. Hmm. I think I'm just going to start. Uh, I'm outside of the clear now, <coughs> right? Yes. Strange, I don't remember ever stepping back. <clears throat> oh, I thought you stepped back. But Maybe you didn't. I, if... I was trying to convince <laughs> Axiom to go back. Okay, then no, maybe Yeah, I think you're still in it. You're still I don't in think the you clearing. moved. Okay. Um, 
I suppose I'll I'll head toward the sword as well. I mean, that, that's where everyone else is. I can't do much from back here, so I'll I'll head forward toward the sword. I don't know if I can get there in time, but um, in well, I don't know what in time for what is, but you start heading towards the sword. Um. All right, Axiom. You are defending the sword. Go ahead and roll plus constitution. All right, you get to hold one. And then when you stand in defense, you can either redirect an attack from the thing you defend to yourself, have the attack's damage, open up the attacker to an ally, giving them plus one forward against the attacker, or deal damage to the attacker equal to your level. I will say in this instance, when it says redirect an attack from the thing you defend to yourself, it means like if he reaches for the sword, you will be able to interrupt that. Well, because it also says defending something means standing nearby and focusing on preventing attacks against the thing or stopping anyone from getting near it. Okay. So I'm already stopping people from getting near it sure. just by being on defense. Okay. Um, so that's really all that you were intending to do? Well, w- we using my one hold, I'd like <coughs> to open up the... Like, if he goes for the sword, I would open him up to an ally, giving that ally plus one forward against the attacker. Okay. And the ally would be uh, Estelise. <coughs> okay. Estelise, you are fastening your rope into a lasso. Yes. You successfully fashion it into a lasso because that is particularly dramatic. <laughs> what do you do with it? Um, with it waving in the air, uh, I am going to yell, I am not done with you yet. <laughs> and I'm going to try, I'm going to uh, try to lasso him. Oh, gosh, what would this be? <laughs> um, This would probably be one of your class moves, I would think. Um, Let's see. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what that would would, be. would it <laughs> I mean I love that you're doing this weird stuff it's just like I have to figure out which move applies to that could I could I make that into a daring devil thing since I am running and it's kind of acrobatic to like hit a moving target while you're running I, I was thinking about that but the thing is is that the only thing that it lets you do is like you can either take plus one forward to him, I guess, or oh, grab someone <coughs> nearby and bring them along with you. That would actually really work. So yeah, yeah, go ahead and roll plus dex with your daring devil. And remember, you also have uh, well, Oops. no, your plan's done. Some you mark experience. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. So here's what I think happens is um. Oh no. <laughs> Axiom knows what happens, and um. Since it's getting kind of late, this might be uh, where we end the session. Um, <laughs> you, uh, I think I just resolved the bond, though. <laughs> you uh, swing your lasso, and you go for the old man, but you overshoot it. And instead, you uh, it gets around Axiom, and you pull him, and he falls. Because you're not able, to, you don't have the strength because he's so heavily armored to, and he wasn't as heavy, like he's heavier than the uh, frail old dead man that you were trying to lasso. So, um, you lasso instead Axiom and pull on him instead. <laughs> well, when you lasso something, when you, when you miss the lasso, you don't have to pull it. Okay, but I assumed it was like one swift motion where you're like, like that you know <laughs> like you got caught up in the dramatics of it but maybe you just get it around axiom then instead and it interrupts his defense <coughs> of the sword <laughs> and you were wondering what in time meant could i defy danger um not really i mean this is the fail that happened. So this is just what happens. Um, I mean, 
so far, all that's happened is that you're lassoed. The man hasn't gotten the sword yet. You're still in the game for this. So we'll just pick up from here. You just have a rope around you now. I have a new necklace. It's an accessory. You could do some fancy moves now, like go for the the clothesline, like run along the other side of him. It was big enough because the intention was to lasso like where his arms were. So like, you know, it wasn't a small lasso. It wasn't a noose. Yeah. Okay. All right. If anything, we just set up for an awesome team maneuver. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can <laughs> go for the, like, drag the wire into him. <laughs> so, okay, let's go ahead and do end of session. Because <coughs> it's about time. So, did anyone resolve a bond with another PC? Uh, let's see here. I don't think so. Nope. Well, I mean, I believe that Alesti is all bluster without ability. But they. I mean, did she did launch off. herself off of a, off of a tree, like two hundred feet through the air, and land directly on somebody's chest and pin him to the ground. Though. I did do that. <laughs> like that. That did yeah. happen. Yeah. So very that, that very bad. elegantly too. <laughs> she looked and, damn and good like, while doing it. <laughs> and everyone else was like running for the middle, and then she just like was there. Like, it's true. Because of her maneuver, she was able to meet everyone else in the middle. Oh gosh, I need another cough drop. Oh. <laughs> Which then enabled everybody to get to the sword. Well, enabled Axiom to get to the sword. Um, let's see here. And <coughs> my bond with Olivia was that we were mutually cursed and must find a cure. I did take a step in that direction. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if I mean, that you can was only like... pick one anyway. So. If you resolved a bond with another PC, you can tell which one, and if the other one, if the other person agrees, mark XP and write a new bond. What was that? Just take a step in fixing it, or to actually fix the curse? Uh, the bond itself reads, I must find a cure, so I did not find a cure for the curse yet. Well, I mean, I, I kind of did find the cure. We just have to implement it. Yeah, I was going to say, like, know. you you did find a cure. You just need to actually, like, <laughs> like, you found out how to cure it. You just haven't, you, you haven't know, found the object it. that's going to cure you, though, because you still yeah. have to find the place of power yeah. and the artifact. So, yeah. I, mean, so I really it, guess it just it's how you interpret it's that. It's kind <laughs> of up to perspective. It's like you could either resolve the one with Estelise if you think that she's all bluster, no action. Still, then keep it. <laughs> If you feel like the one between you and Olivia is resolved, you can r- resolve it, Mark XP. Um, I'll resolve the one with Estelise. She seemed to have proven her combat ability. Right up until she <coughs> sewed the wrong target. But I mean, oh, like look, you haven't if, made if, a if mistake he, he goes, in this campaign ever. If he if he goes <laughs> for the clothesline, it looks intentional, right? Yeah, except yeah, yeah. If we pull this off, of it'll look tied. like. It'll look like we uh Just... we gave each other a nod that you didn't know about. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but then Axiom will be running with his arms pinned to his sides. I mean, that's not quite intentional. He's not pinned. But, well, it's around his his torso, right? I mean, it. I, it's loosely like around him. All right, resolving. I think it's draped like a sash. Resolving bond, gaining XP. <clears throat> you can write a new bond if you have one that you feel is relevant. Not really. Okay, you can leave it. Leave it open. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it open for, for next session. Okay. Did anybody else resolve a bond? I did not. Nope. No. Okay. Um. Did anyone fulfill their alignment at least once this session? I free anyone from literal or figurative bonds. You might be able I to did. do that next session. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I did. I, I can see, like, the beginning of the next session, Olivia just, like, running up to Axiom just to remove that... Shoot that, the rope, uh, and then you go. There you go. <laughs> <clears throat> um, Zed, you have done enough that your alignment's back to good now. Hooray! 
So next session, um, I will have prepared for you a new alignment, or actually you can go to the Dungeon World SRD and look at alignments, and you can choose one of the things under good, or you can just choose the default wizard good alignment. Um, where exactly do I find that um, alignment of good? <clears throat> Oops. Let me see, classes. I think it's under playing the game. Um, it's under, here's a page that has it. Yeah, there we go. Good. Ignore danger to aid another. Lead others into righteous battle. Give up powers or riches for the greater good. Reveal <coughs> a dangerous lie. Show mercy. Or you can choose the wizard one, uh, aid someone directly with my magic. I think is what it is. That one's really easy to fulfill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that one. That one that one worked pretty well for me. All right, so use magic to directly aid another. That'll be your new alignment. So you can go ahead and mark that down. Um, because, I mean, it even works when I use, like, offensive spells against somebody. Because yeah. I'm hurting one person, but I'm helping another, so. You basically just need to cast a spell at some point, and you probably will fill it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right. Um, Axiom, I don't believe there was a criminal or unbeliever that sought mercy. <laughs> um, well, like I don't consider like a stern talking to to those villagers to be a uh, no, because like if you had mercy. if you had slaughtered them, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> next um, time, next time. Estelise, Let's see if they repented or not. Estelise, you definitely went out of your way to show off your skills. So go ahead, Mark XP for that. Damn <laughs> <laughs> a human arrow. Um. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Three questions. Did we learn something new and important about the world? I learned yeah, how we learned that the forest is a real place that you can go to. <laughs> and, and also its location. And you learned how to remove a curse. Also true. All right. So go ahead and everyone mark XP for that one. All right. So even though I had no bearing on that, I still got EXP for yep. that? Yeah, that's a party okay. one. You yeah, helped us find the forest that we just learned about so and it doesn't even matter if you had no part of that it's like if everyone agrees that this happened everyone marks xp okay did we overcome a notable monster enemy nope not yet might <laughs> at the beginning of next session we're, but we're like halfway through might that not part. or did we loot a memorable treasure no because you guys refuse to take the sword come on <laughs> <laughs> we might next session, but as of yet, I mean, we tried to destroy <clears throat> the memorable treasure. Does say. it does it count as looting when when you were like mind controlled into taking this cursed artifact? Um, that's kind of up to you. And I, you don't know it's cursed. You just know it's evil and magical. And it's talking to us. And, and it's talking to you, and it wants you to pick it up, and it wants to make friends with you, and <clears throat> help you slay all your enemies, and give you riches and power. And pretending to be my goddess. Probably well. not our enemies. Probably just everyone. What do you mean, no? <coughs> I said, well. <laughs> that's all I said. Oh, okay. I thought you said no. No, I said, well. <laughs> like, it's got to do what it's got to do to make new friends. I mean, sometimes you tell a little lie. <laughs> make you make everyone think you're cool. <laughs> it's really just like an awkward teenager trying to figure out who it really is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Yugi says it's totally cool, guys. Why won't you be friends with it? <laughs> so that's gonna be a no on the looting of a memorable treasure. Can can yeah. I make a bond against the sword? Be like, I don't trust the sword. <laughs> no, yeah, you can like, only totally... make bonds with other player characters. <laughs> and a GM NPC that's a sword, no. <laughs> Doesn't count. <laughs> All right, and my next character is going to be a piece of equipment then. <laughs> um, I may allow. I'm, I'm going to be a sentient shield. <laughs> oh man, Axiom could totally use a shield. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you could wield it. You'd have to ha give it little legs. Yeah, a, a shield <laughs> well, and a no, halberd can... are not really like, a workable combination. I mean, who says a player character has to have legs? 
Like I could carry carry no, around. My uh, issue is that you can't use a halberd and a shield at the same time. If oh yeah, we sword. probably need to get a sword. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Maybe a cursed evil sword. No. Oh come on, please. <laughs> Well, that was fun. Um, that's going to be it for this yeah. session of Dungeon World. Um, How come I always have more XP than my max? <laughs> I'm <laughs> always waiting to level up every session. <laughs> I mean, you started with your max at the beginning of the session, so... Yeah, and, and like, prior to this session, you fail, like, most of your rolls. <laughs> that's true. No, no, it's... <laughs> For anyone who's still on the stream and watching, the way that Zed works is every other session, he either gets all successes or all fails. That's just it's, how it's it true. Is. That, that is like exactly what has happened. Zelda. This was my all success session. So next session is going to be all fails. I'm looking so forward to it for that personally. One. Stay tuned, guys. You're gonna love it. So I'm going to gain so much XP. <laughs> we will not be back this upcoming Wednesday. We will be back the following Wednesday, which is, let me just double check, the 30th of March with more Dungeon World Old Town. Um, if you want to catch more of my streams, I stream every Sunday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Um, I do a board game stream called Sunday is Game Night. This Sunday, we're playing One Night Ultimate Werewolf, so that's going to be fun. Um, so you guys can come check that out. Um, and I think on the 21st, I'm going to be playing with Eric Volgaris here on Twitch. He is going to be running a one-shot of Lamentations of the Flame Princess, and I'm going to be in that. That's going to be Monday night, the 21st, at 12 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So if you guys want to check that out, I will be hosting that. Um, fellow streamers, would you like to pimp your streams? <laughs> uh, yeah, my stream is twitch.tv slash etherlift. Um, I stream Mondays and Fridays at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, and I'll probably stream at the times when we would have this on the weeks where we don't have it also. And what kind of things do you stream, Maybe. Hazel? Um, usually I stream like mostly turn-based strategy games like Darkest Dungeon or XCOM, but also sometimes fighting games or Dwarf Fortress or just whatever I feel like playing. Dwarf <laughs> Fortress! And Caitlin, do you want to pimp your stream? Um... Yeah, it's it's a little bit MA while I uh, figure out my raid group, but um, I I stream on Saturday nights. Um, oh, it's Twitch Twitch TV slash uh, Otis Lynn, and uh, I I stream I raid a um, I lead a raid in World of Warcraft. Um, we are currently in the process of recruiting though, so our raids aren't. Uh, <coughs> super um, interesting, so I put a quick pause on those, um, and then I also like on Sundays, and then sometimes um, I'll, I'll get together with people and we'll have drunken game nights and be, like <laughs> almost where we, depending on how we, like we'll have rules for circumstances that we have to drink. That sounds fun. Um, you can also, if you are not sure how to spell their names, I think they're still hanging out in chat, so if you guys want to, like, link your stream, well, actually, I think links are broken, so if you want to just say something in chat, you can right-click their name and hit follow if you want to follow them, or if you scroll down to beneath the video, I have, um, little note, little, like, little index cards that say hey follow hazel on twitch or here's caitlin on twitch if you click those that'll also take you to their streams and you can check out their pages that way other than that we will <laughs> we'll be back in two weeks to see the exciting conclusion of the burning forest evil sword dead man fiasco <laughs> <laughs> And um, thanks, everyone, so much for tuning in. I want to give a shout-out to um, Brookalt and Andy123boy for uh, the follows. 
Thanks so much, and thanks again, everyone in chat for watching and participating, including Yugi and Yoshiku, um, Mr. Worst, and um, Brookout again for all the fun comments. Hopefully, we'll see you in two weeks for more Dungeon World Old Town. Thanks again, and have a great night. Uh, by the way, Yugi's advice was that we should leave the forest and cook s'mores so that all of my failures are just bad s'mores. That way <laughs> I get all the XP without all of the risk, and it would be wonderful. <laughs> I think um, bad s'mores are more depressing, though. <laughs> <laughs> bad combat. All right. Quite possible, quite possible. <laughs> That's funny, and we are out of here. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs>